get up, get, get up, get up. All right, guys, welcome back. Some more bonus episode from the Mets Stuff podcast. Hanging out with new Mets outfielder Tyler Naquin. Recently acquired the trade deadline. If you guys have been listening to this podcast for a while, you've known that I've, I've wanted Tyler and this team for a really long time. She's always been kind of funnily, funnily, but one of my favorite players in the league. So first, just, hey, happy to have you here. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. We're having a lot of fun so far. <laughs> just coming to this team about a week and a half ago-ish now, what's it felt like, like emotionally, like getting thrust into a pennant race like this? Yeah, you know, I mean, ever since I got the call, I kind of just, it's been a whirlwind. Like I said, I got a call pretty late, um, packed all my stuff up that night, and in the morning I was on a plane at 12, the next day straight to Miami, and then uh, I was just kind of thrown in here. And But, I mean, the guys and the organization, you know, the staff and everybody has been awesome, very welcoming, and, I I mean, the transition has been pretty smooth, and, and, and I, I appreciate that a lot. Come from Cincinnati, you played in Cleveland before, now you're in New York. What's it like to be in the biggest city in the world? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit on the other extreme, you know, but uh, it's fun, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely an experience whenever we used to come into town to play. Um, you know, it's, it's just a different environment, you know, the ballpark, the city and whatnot. But uh, I think once you settle in after a couple games and you start feeling, you know, more, more settled at another place, you know, obviously you move pretty quick once you get a trade call. But uh, you know, I think we've already been. I've already been here ten or eleven games, which I can't believe. So uh, doubleheader helps. Yeah, the doubleheader <laughs> does help for sure. And uh, it was a big atmosphere over the past five games, so that helped me settle in here with the crowd and stuff. So, uh, no nah, man, the, the, everybody's been real good. <laughs> yeah, we heard the story on social media that when you came to your first home game Thursday night, they rode the scooter here. Was that your scooter? Was that a rented scooter? Was that like some kind of crazy indoctrination to the New York streets? Like, talk us, walk us through that evening. I rode it again today. I rode it every single day. Yeah. yeah. Whenever I was in Cincinnati, I stayed like 0.4 miles from the stadium. And so it was a super easy transit. So I just sold my car and I'd leave my truck that I used. I'd just pull a bunch of trailers and boats back home. So I don't want to bring my truck up to the cities. Um, sold my car. I had a sweet AMG. Um, <laughs> but it was time to get rid of it. And uh, I got a high boy scooter. And dude, it works great. And so I was. I shipped it up here from Cincinnati just to see if I could use it, and I stay pretty close at the hotel, and there's a nice sidewalk that I'm able to use it. So it just depends on what time the game gets over with, if I ride it back at night or not. I'd probably Uber. It's so funny. This, ga- uh, this series coming up, weirdly enough, playing against your former team, what's it like playing against guys that you know just a week, week and a half ago you were teammates with? It is. It is strange, you know what I mean? But- you know, you've kind of done it, you know, even in high school maybe or college or, you know, in the minors or anything like that, but uh, just guys that you have played with. But, uh, you know, I had to play Cleveland quite a bit um, over the past two seasons. But uh, I, I was telling them earlier, I, I built a lot of strong relationships over there, and they, they treated me very well in that organization and the staff and the, uh, and the players, and I made a lot of, a lot of good connections. But... Uh, you know, looking to do that here as well, and these guys are just as welcoming and, and, and good to me as well. So, I mean, baseball's a, it's a very close-knit um, quarters, you know, is what I like to say. It. You know, everybody hears everything about each player. Um, so, I mean, I've heard nothing but great things over here, and it's, you know, it's fun to be a part of. We saw you chopping up with Joey Vado a few minutes ago down by the Reds uh, taking BP. What was it like playing with, one, just such an accomplished player, one of the best players of our generation, two, a guy who's like, no one to be like kind of a jokester, pretty funny dude with a big personality. Yeah, he is, he is a jokester, big personality, um, a great teammate, and you know the production that you see from him on the field, or you know, obviously throughout his career, is just a product of the work that he puts in. You know, when I first got over there, you know, getting to know him and stuff, you know, it's almost like how do you approach him? You know, because like if you if you don't know somebody that's been in an organization for a long time, you know, they got their set ways. But man, he's uh, he became one of my one of my good friends, and uh, you know we still text, still talk, and, and all that stuff. And uh, he, he's he's one of the hardest working ball players I've ever been around. So uh, Joey Votto is, is is a very accomplished and very hard working hard working player. He's a good dude. You've played with Lindor before back in Cleveland. You played with Cookie Carrasco. How did it feel to see some familiar faces in this clubhouse? Yeah, it was nice just being able to uh, you know see some. I mean, you're getting thrown into New York. You know, and, and, and I didn't really know any. I've, I've talked to Pete on first base, you know, a hand, quite a handful of times. But uh, other than that, man, I haven't really talked to anybody. Um, so it's just seeing Frankie and, uh, and, and, and Cookie. It was, it was nice. It was good. Hot shot. 
<laughs> you played for Cincinnati and Cleveland. I lived in Ohio for five years, Ohio State, went to Ohio State. Do you, which, which one do you prefer, Cincinnati or Cleveland? Cincinnati. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I just, I really enjoyed it there. Um, yeah, I just, where I was in commute to the ballpark, the ballpark itself, and just the way, just the way I felt there. It was Cincinnati for me. I can ask you another question, divisive about Cincinnati. What are your opinions on Skyline Chili? I never had it. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think this will be the last question because we know you have to run for the game. I saw that Joey Votto dropped a secret about your last name that it's not technically actually pronounced Naquin. Is that true? Like, what's that all about? Yeah, so uh, Joey's obviously Canadian, and him and I were talking that, you know, half my, my dad's side of the family is from Lafayette, Louisiana, and my last name is Cajun, so it's, uh, you know, people say it Naquin or they attempt Naquin but the real pronunciation is right Joey was saying you know I told him that it's Nakan and it's just Kate you know it's just French so it's really got like Nakan but whenever announcers and stuff would announce me and my brother at sporting events and stuff and he played a lot of football and baseball and heck of an athlete they would just rip his name up <laughs> which no hard feelings I mean yeah, nobody's yeah. trying to butcher your name so yeah, we never not. didn't really care but uh no it's just we'll just keep it as Naquin because yeah. it's kind of tough to pronounce the other way all right, yep. got to run to the game, but thank you so much, Tyler. Glad to have you on this team, and let's go Mets. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Get up, get, get up, get up.